Right now I'm with Joseph Chow who is building BTC Relay. That's a very interesting project connecting Bitcoin and Ethereum and makes Ethereum the first Bitcoin sidechain possibly. So um, let's have an introduction from Joseph Chow first. Hi, I'm, I'm Joseph. I've started initially on Ethereum by uh, contributing to the open source JavaScript implementations and then start on this uh, BTC Relay which is a bridge between Bitcoin and Ethereum, and then that was with um, some the, the Ethereum organization, and then joined Consensus in September. Okay. So what is BTC Relay? So I'll give you um, like maybe the general explanation of BTC Relay. So the mo the most common one that you know a lot of people can understand, and we can poke you know because I can describe BTC Relay in terms of like the general people or to developers. I think, I think a general aspect. one would yes. be better. So, so yeah, generally, um, it allows interaction between B Bitcoin and Ethereum. So when there's a transaction on the Bitcoin blockchain, the Ethereum network doesn't know about it and can't you know, validate, hey, did this transaction really happen? So for example, if you're, if you're a store accepting payments and you want to accept Bitcoin payments, then BTC Relay is a, is a way that will help you be able to verify that mm -hmm. actually happened in the Bitcoin network inside Ethereum. Okay, so mm -hmm. let's perhaps take take another example. Let's say I um, I have a Bitcoin address, mm -hmm. and I have I currently hold Ether, mm -hmm. and you have Bitcoin, mm -hmm. and we want to do an exchange. So you want my Ether in exchange for your Bitcoin. So with BTC Relay, can we do something like you send the Bitcoin to my address and then the Ether gets automatically transferred to your address? Yes, this is a really, really good example. And it's kind of a, also part of the reason how yeah, the BTC Relay starts. So, so what, what would happen is when I pay the Bitcoin to your address, in the, um, the second output of that Bitcoin transaction, I would encode my ether address mm -hmm. and so I have yeah I have some command line tools to to help construct that and then once I send the bit the Bitcoin on the Bitcoin blockchain then I can send the that Bitcoin transaction to another um, contract in Ethereum which will use BTC relay to verify that I did um, I did pay you the bitcoins and then your your ethers are locked in a, in a contract, which has the the ether, and then the contract will verify. Yeah, did I really pay the bitcoins? And when it does, then it will send your ether to my ether address. Okay, that's a so, basic example. So mm -hmm. so basically, in this scenario, uh, what is happening is um, when you pay the bitcoin on the bitcoin blockchain, and the transaction is is there. That transaction is included in a block, so there is a Merkle proof linking your transaction to the block. Mm -hmm. And then let's say there was enough proof of work done to have six blocks, so you have, you can prove that uh, the block in which your transaction is, it was followed by six blocks. And then would I send the whole proof to BTC Relay? Would you send the whole proof to BTC Relay? Uh, yes, yes you would. And yeah, constructing these proofs are not, uh are, are you know are not so straightforward so yeah there's at least on uh, for, on the JavaScript side I have a library that's also an NPM that helps construct that proof and a lot of these things for if you're a DApp developer yeah you want to do that for your users because you can ask your users to you know create a proof of your Bitcoin uh, transaction and then send that to BTC Relay okay so all you would do is just ask your users what's the Bitcoin transaction and your DApp would do that. So, so, so in essence, uh, like, like we have the concept of an SPV wallet in which basically um, I can I can transact on the Bitcoin network without being a full node, mm -hmm. and I can verify that something happened on the Bitcoin blockchain. BTC Relay is essentially an SPV wallet of Bitcoin, but implemented as a smart contract on Ethereum, right? Yes, that's a very yeah very good way of describing it. Okay, mm -hmm. so. Um, 
so so basically uh, basically like this is like one half of a side chain transaction right like as 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 side chains originally conceived by by blockstream uh, you do an action x on the bitcoin network then submit a proof of that action x on another chain and you get some other assets in exchange for for that particular action so this this is possible today with btc relay but already right so yes it's a it's a key building block that leads that can lead to side chains definitely it's the it's just the very the initial building block mm -hmm. that yeah verifies that the bitcoin transaction has been uh, you know has been confirmed in the bitcoin blockchain the the other parts of um, actually verifying hey did this bitcoin transaction actually lock you know certain bitcoins that that would still have to be implemented in the Ethereum contract. Yeah. So, what, mm -hmm. what is the difference between the two? So, so oh, so uh, let's say you're a sidechain contract, right? You you all, you want to verify that hey, were these bitcoins really locked, and then how many bitcoins were locked? If one bitcoin was locked, maybe you'll get one sidechain token. Mm -hmm. So all all that logic has to be implemented in another Ethereum contract, mm -hmm. and. Yeah, the way we've been describing um, th this approach, it's just one possible way that sidechains might be able to be implemented in Ethereum. Mm -hmm. I think there are um, there there are other ways that might uh, yeah might might go around it. I yeah can't remember those right now though. Okay, so in in terms of uh, this BTC relay as a smart contract on Ethereum. How much how much gas does it consume to say verify a, a, a Bitcoin transaction? So the the good thing is that it's since these Merkle proofs are are, are logarithmic, depending on uh, the number of transactions in in the block, they they're relatively short. And I I, re, I I've done the computations for how much it is to uh, store a Bitcoin block header, and that one is around. 200,000 gas to store an 80 byte Bitcoin block header. And so ver verifying, I think, is going to take uh, less gas because storage is one of the biggest gas costs. I, I, I didn't get to uh, run, run the numbers yet, but I would say that uh, to verify a transaction would be less than 200,000 gas. Okay. So, so for our listeners, um so the current price, gas mm -hmm. price is around say 15, 50 Shannon, which is yes. uh, 50, one Shannon is like one billionth of an ether and 50 Shannon is a very mm -hmm. tiny amount. Yes. So 200. It would be, it would be um, yeah, point, point zero 0.01 ether. So it would, so more, uh, verifying a Bitcoin transaction using BTC delay on Ethereum would be like point zero 0.01 ether, which is around a cent. Mm -hmm. So this, you can do this, essentially this kind of verification of Bitcoin mm -hmm. transactions yes. in bulk on the Ethereum mm -hmm. network. Yeah, that's right. And there are other ways, yeah, there are definitely, definitely plenty, few other ways to lower the cost as well. And I think you'll probably have one, yeah, one of your guests, uh, Jeff Coleman, who's very, um, who has a lot of ideas about off-chain, you know, doing a lot of things off-chain. And I discussed with him some of these ideas, so it's possible to um, do do more of these things off chain, and and lower lower the costs as well. Okay. But um, I'm not sure um, how much, yeah, whether we will go ahead with those ideas or currently release the current version. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, ha have you seen any applications already for BTC relay? So as as far as I I'm aware. I'm the, I, I've been the, the uh, de decentralized trustless um, Ethereum Bitcoin swap. Mm -hmm. That's the that's the main which I'm also working on. That's the one that I, that I I'm just aware of. But I think uh, uh, some Oracle services would be interested in uh, integrating BTC Relay. Mm -hmm. So the decentralized. And uh, uh, so, sorry, and then another um, and. The, and uh, yeah, some of my teammates, like the Gnosis prediction market, I think they have also plans to leverage it. Okay, so the decentralized trustless uh, BTC ETH swap is exactly the example we went through, right? Yes. Some, um, mm -hmm. You can exchange Bitcoin for Ether yes. without That's there being right. a central party yep. at all. Mm -hmm. That's right. And just because um, I think the, the initial explanation that 
that that I that we discussed, where um, that we already discussed. But in a, as an off chain um, example, it's quite interesting because what would happen is I would just send you you the bitcoins directly, and then you know if you're most of the time you're going to be a good guy, you know. So then you'll just send me the ether, right? And then that will be completely off chain. You know, I just sent you Bitcoin. There's in the Bitcoin blockchain, but in Ethereum, you know, it's quite quite simple that you're just sending me the, the the Ether directly, right? So, so the so that so that 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 seems pretty efficient. Now, let's say you're you're um, you 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 decide not to send, not to send not send to send the Ether. Back. Then that's when we would just um, really use the contract as like a final judge. To, that will then arbitrate that if I can give it a proof that I really did give you Bitcoin, mm -hmm. then it would you know give give me your ether still even without your cooperation. But most of the time, you know th that that should not need to be invoked because you'll get you'll get punished. Okay, and so uh, so in this case when I'm when I'm uh, asking the contract to verify something in Bitcoin, can I also ask the contract that verify that this this transaction has at least six confirmations or 10 confirmations or 100 confirmations? Yes, so yeah, that, that would be, that, that's um, an extension that could be made. Right now, we just that strictly check for six confirmations. Mm -hmm. The uh, tricky thing about further, um, like let's say 100 confirmations is, the, the only way to do that is to, um, like you, you would have, with, with the backtracking involved, it would just cost, cost a lot more gas. Whereas if you always just check for, for six, you know, then it's just like looking for six, six items back and then that's the end of your gas. But if you're checking for 100 confirmations, you, in a way you might need to do sometimes some kind of like binary search way. Mm -hmm. And then after that, you know, kind of po possibly have more checks needed. So it might cost more gas. Mm -hmm. And and now the now the reverse is not possible, right? Like you cannot do. So right now, uh, like the exchange we talked about, it's I have ether. I lock the ether into a smart contract. Then you send me Bitcoin in an address, and then you send the proof of uh, proof of this payment to BTC Relay. BTC Relay gives uh, give returns like that the transfer was correct to to the contract and the contract then releases the ether to you mm -hmm. so we can do it this way but the opposite flow is not possible right like have something on the btc side that can verify an ethereum transaction have yeah. something on bitcoin that verifies ethereum that is not possible today right yeah that's right yeah that yeah none of the parts on the bitcoin side uh not we, we yeah we haven't implemented any of the parts on the bitcoin side so usually, yeah, that's always been something that that I thought might be needed. But when I, um, but there are ideas that we actually don't need to yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, implement things on the yeah. Bitcoin side. Yes, yes. Okay. So as long as we have that um, primitive where we can do a trustless Ethereum and Bitcoin swap, yeah, there are other interesting s schemes where, we, yeah, we don't actually need to write a bunch of Bitcoin script to to be able to do the the other part. So, like like as we saw in this conference, there are a couple of financial institutions that are wanting to issue, uh, let's say, fiat currencies on Ethereum-like blockchains. So, in principle, what could happen is, let's say, like there's a big financial institution that issues like USD on another separate Ethereum-like blockchain. Then, essentially, could you do a swap between? The USD and Ether uh, using BTC, like not BTC relay, but USD relay in this case. Yeah, d yeah. Depending on that, I think uh, yeah, using similar yeah similar ideas, it would be it would be possible. So yeah, some of the I key ideas of using yeah, Mer Merkle proofs. Yeah, as you we've seen a lot in uh, DevCon, there's been a lot of uh, Merkleizing many things. So the, the, the key ideas definitely can help. Okay. So, so, so one, one other question that um, people sometimes ask is if it can work with things like MasterCoin or Dogecoin or Litecoin. And right now, um, it, the, you, you wouldn't be able to really make a, a Litecoin 
relay because it uses script and script is not a native native opcode in EVM. So to write to write that would cost a lot a lot 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 of gas. So mm -hmm. I think Vitalik even mentioned maybe millions or billions of gas. So oh. so that's why yeah. So a lot of those um, altcoins we wouldn't be able to do. And since Mastercoin is just metadata in, in Bitcoin, that would, um, yeah, that, that would also not be possible. Uh, so what you're saying is uh, because, um, because Litecoin's algorithm uh, wanted to be ASIC resistant, so they made it memory hard, mm -hmm. which means that in order to mine a Litecoin, you need a lot of memory. So uh, any, any proof of a Litecoin transaction requires memory in order for verification. And memory is essentially an expensive operation in, in, in a smart contract. Is that why is that why it, it's more like the, the, the script hashing function. So in, in Bitcoin, the, the hashing function is SHA256, which is natively supported in EVM. Mm -hmm. But the script, yeah, the, these hashing functions, there's yeah, enough detail in them that yeah, you, uh, I'm not too familiar with script, but if you're um, what what with what you said? If it was memory hard, then yeah, it would yeah in EVM we would have to simulate that and it would uh, yeah cost a lot of gas. Okay, cool. So where can our uh, viewers discover your work? Or sure, reach out I, to you? I guess the yeah the the the, the site is btcrelay.org and it's uh, yeah it's uh, th that's where to, to to find the information and. It will have links to the GitHub repo as well and the Gitter channel where, where people can ask any questions. Also an email address there. Okay. Thanks, Joseph, for taking out the time. Okay. Thank, thank you, Mihir.